Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to animate a still photo similar to a plotograph. Notice there are five separate elements of the photo that are moving. The top and main areas of the waterfall, the mist below and to the right of the waterfall, and the stream at the bottom. Each part is moving at a different speed and a different direction. For your convenience, I provided this photo by Ruslan Valiev from Unsplash. You can download it from the link in my video's description or project files. For those of you who aren't already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, smash that small subscribe button at the lower right corner. In this particular example, since there are five independent areas that will be animating, it may seem to be too daunting. However, keep in mind, the steps for each are exactly the same. The first step is to protect the stationary areas of your photo that will overlap the parts that will animate later. To do this, we'll brush in quick masks over those stationary areas. First, make a copy of the photo by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Check your foreground and background colors. If they're not black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Black should be your foreground color. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Choose a basic round brush. We'll adjust the size in a moment. Its hardness should be 0% and its opacity and flow are 100%. To adjust the size of your brush, make sure your caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over the sky and just inside the top of the mountain ridge on both sides of the waterfall. At the bottom, brush over the people and the land they're standing on, as well as the rock formation at the lower left. Since there's a mist over that formation, we want to gradually brush out the left of it. To do this, Reduce the brush's opacity and brush over it, fading out the quick mask. Press Q to convert the quick mask into a selection and then invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Temporarily hide the top layer and make the bottom layer active. We'll start to brush over areas of the photo that we want to animate and then we'll save them as separate layers. First, increase your brush's opacity back to 100% and press Q so we can paint in a quick mask. Brush over the stream. Press Q to make it into a selection and then invert the selection. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy it from the background. Name it Stream. Since we're going to ultimately warp the shape of it on the timeline, we need to convert it first into a smart object. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Make the background active. Press Q again and make sure black is your foreground color. This time, brush a quick mask over the waterfall and make sure you include a little of the cliff on the left. Convert it into a selection and then invert the selection. Cut and copy it onto its own layer, name it Waterfall, and convert it into a smart object. Remember to always make the background active before brushing over a new area. Next, brush a quick mask over the top of the waterfall and, as before, make it into a selection and then invert the selection. Cut and copy it onto its own layer and name it Top of Waterfall. Then convert it into a smart object. I'll do the next area very quickly since we'll be repeating all the steps. As always, make the background active. Brush a quick mask over the bottom mist. Make the quick mask into a selection. Invert the selection. Cut and copy it to its own layer. Name it bottom mist. 
change it into a smart object, and make the background active. Make the mist on the right of the waterfall by following all the previous steps. Now that we have all the areas that we want to animate, we'll place them onto a timeline. First, make the top layer visible so it'll be included in the timeline. Go to Window and Timeline. At the bottom, choose Create Video Timeline and click it. Drag the panel up until you can see all of the layers. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to see your entire photo. Next, we'll group all the layers that we'll be animating into a folder. To do this, click the Stream layer, scroll down, and shift click right mist to make active all of the individual areas of the photo that we copied. Then, press Ctrl or Command G to group them into a folder. We'll make an animation two seconds in length which will loop. To do this, drag layer 1 to the two second mark on the timeline. Open the folder and repeat this with each of the layers. To loop the animation, click the gear icon and make sure loop playback is checked. I'll leave the resolution at 100%, but you may want to lower the amount to 50% if you want your computer to preview the animation faster. Don't worry, it won't render the finished animation at the lower resolution, it'll just preview it that way. Let's rearrange the layers according to how we want the areas of the photo to overlap each other. For example, we want the mist to be in front of the waterfall, so first, drag down the Layers panel to see all the layers in the folder, and drag the right mist layer to the top in the folder. Notice it automatically rearranges itself in the timeline. Drag the bottom mist below the right mist. Drag the top of the waterfall below the bottom mist, and the waterfall below that. The stream will remain at the bottom. Next, we'll create keyframes along the timeline for each layer. Open the Waterfall Properties. If you can't see all of its properties, just scroll down the Timeline panel. Click the Stopwatch icon to create the first keyframe. This is the point where the waterfall will start to animate. Drag the time indicator to the end of the two-second timeline, and click the diamond-shaped icon to create a new keyframe. This keyframe will be the end of the waterfall's animation. Press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. We'll use this tool to manipulate the shape of each area we're going to animate. Drag the bottom of the transform's bounding box down a bit past the bottom of the document. Then, press Enter or Return. Press the Play button to process each frame on the timeline. Once it does, you'll see it animating much smoother. Don't be concerned with it jumping, we'll take care of that later. To stop the animation, press the Play button again, or press Enter or Return. Collapse the Waterfall Properties, and open the top of the Waterfall Properties. Drag the Time Indicator to the first frame, and click the Stopwatch to create a keyframe. Drag the Time Indicator to the last frame, and click the diamond-shaped icon to create a keyframe at the end of the timeline. Open your Transform tool, drag the bottom down, and drag the top up until the upper right corner is positioned to the top of the waterfall behind it. Notice that the upper left corner of the cutout doesn't match the position of the waterfall behind it. No problem. Go to the top left corner of the bounding box, and press and hold Ctrl or Command as you drag the corner up so it matches the position. Then press Enter or Return. Press the Play button to process each frame. To stop the animation, click the Play button or press Enter or Return. Collapse the top of the Waterfall Properties, and open the Bottom Mist Properties. Drag the time indicator to the first frame, and click the stopwatch icon to create the first keyframe. Drag the time indicator to the last frame, 
and click the diamond-shaped icon to create the last keyframe. Open your Transform tool. Drag the left side of the bounding box to the left and the right side to the right just a little. Then press Enter or Return. Click the Play button to preview the animation. Repeat these steps to create keyframes for the right mist. With the time indicator on the last frame, open your Transform tool and drag the right side out a bit. Go to the top right corner and press and hold alt Control shift on Windows or Option-Command-Shift on a Mac as you drag the corner straight up. This drags both the upper and lower right corners at the same time. Then press the Play button to preview the animation. Repeat these steps to create keyframes for the stream layer. With the time indicator on the last frame, open your Transform tool and drag the bottom down a bit. Go to the bottom left corner and press and hold Control or Command plus Shift as you drag the corner out approximately this much. As before, to see a preview, press the Play button. Next, we'll create an infinite loop of the animation. Stop the animation, collapse the properties, and close the folder. Make two copies of the folder by pressing Ctrl or Command J twice. Open the Group 1 Copy folder and click this icon to open the Fade presets. Drag Fade down over the left side of the right mist to fade it in and continue to drag Fade to the left side of the other layers. If you can't see the stream layer, just scroll down the timeline panel. Open the Fade presets again and drag down Fade to the left side of the stream layer. Close the Group 1 Copy folder and open the Group 1 Copy 2 folder. Click the right mist layer, open the Fade presets and drag down Fade to the right side of the layer. Repeat this with the remaining layers. Close the folder and drag the time indicator to the 1 second mark. Go to the Group 1 copy layer and drag it so the left side of it is flush with the time indicator. Go to the Group 1 copy 2 layer and drag it to the left until its right side is flush with the time indicator. Drag the playhead to the 2 second mark to trim the animation. Click the Play button to preview the animation. To render the finished animation, stop the preview and click the Render icon. Name it and click Select Folder. I'll save it to my desktop. Then click Select Folder to confirm it. The format is H.264 and the preset is high quality. I'll keep the document size 1920 by 1080, but if you want to reduce its file size, feel free to make it a lower amount. Then click Render. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.